news about the Fantastic Four film. Hey, happy Tuesday, everyone. This is Noah Drake Bell doing a quick solo live stream because I want to get the conversation going about the Fantastic Four movie. And let's talk about the previous Fantastic Four films and let's just talk about just the Fantastic Four comics in general. We've got some pretty solid casting news coming out of the Hollywood trades on the same day as the writer's strike. Weird coincidences. But hey, life is full of weird coincidences. And we know we love weird here at Geek Pulse. So strap in, grab your favorite beverage, grab your favorite comic book, and uh, let's talk Fantastic Four. All right, so the first kind of major announcement that we ever got about the Fantastic Four movie is that Matt Shackman is directing. So Matt is the director of this film. He um, He's directed... Several of my favorite episodes of It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, which is uh, pretty cool. I think that lends itself, uh, yeah, let me go get a drink. Random street theater, strap in, grab a drink, grab some popcorn, grab some whatever you need to just like hang out, chill out with me, literally in my garage slash studio where we talk about Fantastic Four. I don't have any like Fantastic Four related merch or shirts. Um... I noticed that's a lot of that. a lot of YouTubers will do that. They'll match the shirt that they are wearing in the interview or the video or the live stream. I know that um, that's a thing, but I just don't have any Fantastic Four shirts. I got a sweet Blues Brothers shirt though, so hey, he was on a mission from God, and maybe the Fantastic Four is too. But maybe their God is the Watcher. Ah, oh, the Watu. So, there's so many crazy rumors about the Fantastic Four cast, and we're going to break them down right here. But yeah, so Matt Shackman is the director, director of some of my favorite episodes of It's Always, so uh, it's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. So I think he's going to do a good job when he's uh, behind the lens of Marvel's first family. Why have we not gotten a, a really great Fantastic Four movie already? That's kind of the question. Um, there's been... Well, Roger Corman's Fantastic Four film, the original, fan, the next one, Fantastic Four, Fantastic Four Rise of the Silver Surfer, the Fantastic Four movie that Trank directed that we really don't talk about, but we're going to talk about it on this live stream because it's everything Fantastic Four. And we have to talk about the failures and the steps along the way to possibly get to something great. So that's, that's the first thing I want to talk about. Why have we not gotten a very good or even decent Fantastic Four film. Now, I might be in the minority here, but I don't hate the Roger Corman film. Yes, I said that correctly. I do not hate that Fantastic Four film that Roger Corman made. And the reason he made it is so that, you know, they can retain the rights to the Fantastic Four. That movie was never supposed to see the light of day, but at conventions similar to Dragon Con, because the Fantastic Four, kind of an awkward superhero team. Mr. Fantastic is cringe. So Mr. Fantastic is cringe, Onyx Demon. I think that probably the best Fantastic Four movie already exists, and it's called The Incredibles. I mean, they, they kind of proved that we could have a great Fantastic Four film. Reed Richards is a dick. And, you know, there's no two ways around it. Like, his character is sort of a, a dick. He is. That's why Sue Storm wanted to go towards Namor, who on paper seemed like a bigger dick. And... Sue Storm herself, her powers are that she turns invisible. That's a harder character to write. I don't know. But you would think that it would be done. But You would think we'd have something special already. Now, let's talk about um, that first Fantastic Four with, with of course, Joan Gufford as Mr. Fantastic, Jessica Alba, grossly miscast as Sue Storm, Michael Chiklis, perfectly cast as, what's up, Creed? What is up, Creed? Michael Chiklis perfectly cast as the thing. Um, and, you know, Captain America as <laughs> Johnny Storm. Uh, so, Creed, hey, yeah, I think that... I, I, I'm going to tell you right now. You're going to enjoy Gardens of the Galaxy 3 based on everyone I've talked to, based on a little bit of snippets that I saw, based on some very insider information that I have about that film. It's so weird that, like, now that we've gotten fairly big on YouTube, people come to us with, like you know, spoilers and information. I think the that fat all right. Yeah. Okay. So Onyx Demon, I think you you pretty much got a you nailed it as far as what I want to really, really talk about. 
The Fantastic Four has suffered yet because they had Doctor Doom, right? Which they had no idea what to do with. And then Doctor Doom. And then Doctor Doom. But in the second one, they kind of had Galactus. But again, they had no idea what to do with Galactus. And, and hell, it's the, the Mole Man is the villain in the very first Fantastic Four comic. So Fantastic Four as the first family, they have great villains in the comics. I just don't know why people can't... Yeah, that Fantastic Four film ruined my life too, Creed. I don't understand why we can't just make Doctor Doom menacing. Doctor Doom intellectual. Doctor Doom... I don't know, Doctor Doom never read to me in the comics as suave. And that's kind of what they wanted to do in the, the movies, make him super suave. Maybe, you know, he, I guess he was considered a handsome man, or he considered himself a handsome man. He's very vain, right? Yeah, because Galactic is like the uh, go to the Marvel Universe. You can't wait to bring Galactus and, uh, you know, like, we have the power now. We have the technology. We can do it. We can bring a Galactus-level threat to the MCU. All right. Galactus is the, um, yeah, hell yeah, he is. Galactus eats worlds. He's the eater of worlds. The MCU Fantastic Four movie sounds like a disaster. They can't get a darn thing made. Well, a lot of it has to do with special effects, casting. I think that they don't want to ruin it and rush all the info. We're chopping at the bit for casting news, costumes, all that stuff. We live in a world where we're like, now, 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 I need it, need it. Net Netflix, social media streaming has got us like, I need it now, I want it now, give it to me now. Put it in my veins, you know? However... They're going to wait. But in the meantime, we've got rumors. So we're talking about Fantastic Four. We're talking about Galactus. It was ruined. Galactus was ruined as some sort of puffy cloud in that one Fantastic Four movie. The, the Rise of the Silver Surfer, Doug Jones as a Silver Surfer, in my opinion, is the best part of that movie. Nailed the look. Nailed the character. Doom is supposed to be all messed up from him putting a mask on when it was still hot. Yes. And he is using his vanity like he did. He had That mask was super hot. He put it on his face, got super burnt up. You know, he had an opinion of himself before and then he's all hideous now, so it's a little bit of like vanity. Uh, I have heard Guardians of the Galaxy 3 is very dark and sadly hurting the Rotten Tomato score. Anymore, man, just just throw those Rotten Tomato scores out. You set the bar so high with Endgame. Yes, that's that's the thing. Maybe they've set it too high for themselves, Onyx Demon. Maybe it's, it's too high. I think that Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 is going to feel more like an MCU film. You know, the last couple, Shang-Chi, awesome. The rest, mm, not so much. What do you guys think? Let me know. I, I can't have the, the, the ability to do a poll. Once we become YouTube partners on our live streams, I could do polls and stuff, but I'll just pose the question to you. Antonio Banderas is rumored to be Galactus in the new movie. What are your thoughts on that? What are you, the people out there watching this? Fantasia was considered a flop when it came out, too. That's right, it was. No one really loved it. Antonio Banderas, yes or no for Galactus? Thor Love and Thunder gave me cancer. Oh, harsh but true. Uh, I mean, Galaxy of the Galaxy, yeah. So I wanted a little bit darker film. It's, you know, sometimes life is dark. The last two have been super upbeat, so it makes sense to close out the Guardians chapter with a darker, more serious film. It doesn't mean the whole film is going to be doom and gloom. It doesn't. It just means it's, you know, deal with some darker subject matter. You get the high evolutionary. And if you guys are a comics reader like I am, that's what I'm most excited about. For real. I want to see Rocket's backstory. Um, I don't want to see where they all end up. So, Onyx Demon, that's one for no to Antonio Banderas as Galactus. Anyone else have any opinions? Creed, he doesn't have the build or the voice. Yes, doesn't have the build. That's, that's it, right? Neither. You know, I think it's a weird casting choice, personally, in my opinion. What do you guys think? Yeah, I, uh, I, I just, I can't picture it. I don't get it. And I'm not one of those ones that said, hey, I can't picture Heath Ledger as a Joker. I could picture that before it even happened. I don't know. So, the, yeah, the Guardians films have always been rather dark. Peter's mom dies literally in the first three minutes of Volume 1. Yes. Yeah, that's true. The characters are tragic. It's like a Macbeth situation. So, I don't know. Um, yeah, Antonio Banderas. I can't see him. Love the man. El Mariachi. Perfect. His earlier stuff when he's, you know, 
more of a badass. He's just not a badass anymore. All I hear is Puss in Boots. Tom Hardy for Galactus only because his voice work is Bane. Vin Diesel for Galactus. Oh, I love it. I love it. I also would go with either one of those. Yeah, Puss in Boots. Yeah, that's all I hear when I hear the voice. I, I, I don't... I'm not saying that Antonio Banderas does not have the range to change his voice up between Puss in Boots to Galactus, but I just don't see it. For me, let's see, who would I pick for Galactus? I'd want someone with, like, so much gravitas, right? Um, but also, like, a huge build, you know what I'm saying? I don't know, that's tricky, man. It really is. Like, if The Rock had not been out overplayed and had not been Black Adam and he'd not been in any superhero movies, like, if we just got, like, OG uh, Dwayne Johnson, I could see him playing Galactus. Um... Tom Hardy, like you guys said, that would be great. Uh, the dude from who plays Reacher, Jack Reacher, Rickman, that dude is jacked. He would be a good Galactus. Liam Neeson, that's got the gravitas for Galactus right there. Very much so. He's got that Galactus personality. I know you might have been joking, but hey, Galactus has a certain set of skills, baby, and you know, you can't go against those. But Antonio Banderas, no. I'm just not seeing it. Sorry. I don't know if it's true, don't know if it's going to be a thing, but Antonio Banderas as Galactus, even in voice alone, I'm sorry, no. I'd rather have Andy Serkis play Galactus in mocap. Black Adam wasn't that bad, I was entertained. It wasn't the best, it wasn't that bad. Yeah. Alright, so let's move on to the next casting. What do you guys think about Kylo Ren <laughs> as Mr. Fantastic? That's right, Adam Driver himself, Kylo Ren, among other things... He looks to be absolutely our Mr. Fantastic. What do you think? What are your comments? Let me know. Onyx says, I'm just uh, judgy on actors, really. Yeah, sometimes I am. Rarely, you know, you, yeah, well, I mean, it's, it's movies and media is subjective. So certain people like certain things. Other people like different things. We don't always have to like the same thing. So uh, Patrick Bateman, you don't mind Adam Driver as uh, Mr. Fantastic. I'm with you. I think it's going to be a great, great role for him. Again, Reed Richards in the comic books is a dick. The only role I want to Kylo Ren is to young Snape. He, uh, Onyx Demon, man, he would be the perfect young Snape. Legitimately. If they go that route, right? And they probably will because we're getting that Harry Potter show on Max. Get Adam Driver as a young Severus Snape. Man, that's brilliant. Damn. You need to be a casting director for sure. But I do think that the driver's got the, the chops, the emotional range to play Reed Richards. Again, Reed's a dick, but he's also super intelligent, and he knows that. And his intelligence saves the day most of the time uh, with his stretchiness. You know, Adam Driver, super stretchy. Are they going to make jokes about it? Don't be, I don't want, I don't want jokes. Adam Driver might be a big budget for a TV. Yeah, yeah, I see you. Snape is a big role. But that... HBO Max, well, Max has a lot of money to throw around, so they could get him for a season. I mean, they really could. They could, they could afford Adam Driver yeah, for a whole season of a show, or two, or three. I don't know what they're doing over there. I don't know. That's a whole separate video. That's going to be my Harry Potter video live stream. But I do think Adam Driver is good, Mr. Fantastic. I don't want too many jokes. I don't want dumb-looking stretch powers. Uh, I want it to be smart choices when he's stretching. Yeah, oh, JK. Not, I'm not JKing. That's, that's serious. I don't want Fantastic Four. Yeah, I feel you. Yeah, if they're making a Harry Potter show based on the books, just trust me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They have the money. They have the money. Warners, uh, <laughs> yeah, they've got the money. They will, they will spend it on whoever they want to. Some unknown kid has got to be the new Harry Potter. Ah, all right. Said I wouldn't take a, talk about no Harry Potter. Um, yeah, Adam Driver. Awesome. All right. Margot Robbie. Margot Robbie. Margot Robbie from Margot Robbie. Either way, as Sue Storm. Thoughts? What do you think about Harley Quinn as Sue Storm? And is the fact that they're going to cast her a big F you to James Gunn? Is Kevin Foggy's like, well, all right, you're going to leave us to be the head of DC? You're going to take some of the, the actors 
that we have in Marvel over to DC? Well, I'm going to take your Harley Quinn and put her in our Fantastic Four movie. Is it petty? Is that what's going on? Is Kevin Feige just plotting in his office? He's like, yeah, I'm going to take freaking Harley Quinn away from you, and I'm going to put her in the Fantastic Four. If he did that for that reason, that's a ballsy move, Kevin Feige. You've got more hair on your balls than you do on your head. Oh, that's why he wears a hat all the time. He's so, he's so bald. Horrible idea. Worse than George Clooney as Batman. Oh, my gosh. Hot take. Creed coming in hot with a hot take. I love that hot take. Um, so, uh, does that mean it's a no for you? <laughs> no Margot Robbie as... Uh, all right, no, she's a great relationship with WB. I don't think she wants to ruin that. Yeah, Margot Robbie is such a talent. She could do it, yeah, but she's not... Yeah, I got it. She was born to play Harley Quinn. She could probably play Sue Storm. Here's what I'm saying, man. Give it to somebody else. She's already been Harley Quinn. She's already playing Barbie. Get another actor, actress. Get someone... Someone else deserves a turn, man. I can see her in the role, and if you put her in the costume, she's going to look exactly like Sue Storm from the comic books. And I appreciate that, but I don't think it's a good idea. I don't think Margot Robbie cast as Sue Storm is a good idea at all. I don't even think she can act, guys. I mean, I, not really. I mean, she's okay. She's great as Harley Quinn, but can she play anything else? I'm not sure. Beautiful woman. I'm sure she's super talented. I don't see her as Sue Storm. And the fact that she's so beautiful and Sue Storm's powers are the fact that she just becomes invisible all the time. Are they really going to pay all that money to get Margot Robbie to have her invisible all the time? I wish they would just do no-name actors. That That is my wish, my dream. That's how we got no-name actors, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. 100%. 110%. Could not agree more. Um nailed it literally um yeah that's how we, i mean hugh jackman was an unknown actor pretty much you want hallie Haley back hallie berry which Haley are you talking about who do you want back for me alice eve would be a really great sue storm you guys like alice eve i think that would be a good choice um i do think that um i don't know she's a hard woman to cast adam sandler is mr fantastic yes Seth Rogen is the thing. Yes. Molly Shannon is Sue Storm. Uh, Martin Short, Dr. Doom. Um, <laughs> no. Bill Murray, all of it. Benedict Cumberbatch is Mr. Fantastic. Only way to go. They couldn't do that with him being Dr. Strange, but he would be awesome as Mr. Fantastic. All right. Let's talk about the thing a little bit. Um, ben Grimm. That blue-eyed baby's boy, baby's mom, I forget what his thing was. That's clobbering time was his phrase, but he said something blue-eyed, something or another. I think Ben Grimm is my favorite character on the Fantastic Four lineup. So Adam Driver is Mr. Fantastic. Eh. Whoever the hell they're going to get to play Sue Storm. Mm. I want to know who's going to be the thing. I want to know who's going to be Ben Grimm. We've not announced it yet. I did say Seth Rogen earlier, jokingly, but apparently Seth Rogen was in talks, and he might still be in talks to play Ben Grimm. Stan Lee changed all of our lives. He really did. Throw me a curveball for Galactus, Onyx Demon. Throw me a curveball. I want to hear all the off-the-wall choices. I'm going to do a curveball, too. Uh, John Travolta, I can see it. Paul Mezcal as the thing instead of Johnny Storm. Patrick Bateman, yes. I prefer that, yeah. Paul Mescal apparently is out anyway because he's got to do um, Gladiator 2 of all films. Gladiator 2. Um, but speaking of that, did you see who they got cast in Gladiator 2? Pedro Pascal. Have Pedro Pascal as Doctor Doom. Or Pedro Pascal as Galactus. That's an off-the-wall. Let's have the fucking Mandalorian as Galactus. Let's do that. That's who I want. That's my off-the-wall choice. Pedro Pascal, Galactus, for life. Uh, for The Thing, for Benjamin Grimm, I'm thinking you need some sort of, like, you need somebody tough, right? But oh, who, who could do mocap as well? That might be hard, man. Blade sounds like a garbage movie. The script was so bad, they scrapped it. They scrapped that script, like, three times. It's not hard, 
Blade fights vampires. Have plenty of action. Throw some techno in there, man. Early 2000s techno. Just so we can be like, hey, I remember the old Blade movies. Have a great, um, like, co-star for Blade. Like a very attractive lady. She may be a vampire. She may be turning into a vampire. Back and forth. I don't know. Have him fight Dracula. It's easy. It's not rocket science. It's easiness. Blade should be a slam dunk. Don't worry about the old... Yeah, Benjamin Blue Eyes, a dig with his dainty paws. There it is. I knew. Random Street Theater. I knew it would be you. Hats off to you. I knew you'd know that. Um, but who do you want to play the thing? Alan Richardson, the guy who played Reacher as Ben Grimm. Could not agree more. The gruff voice. Just glue some rocks on that son of a bitch. He's already a mountain anyway. He's like built like crazy, man. You love all three original Blade films, Onyx Demon? All three? You like the, you like Blade Trinity? You like uh, Vampire Poodles or Vampire Chihuahua? Who, yeah, you should play the thing. All right, well, you might as well cast yourself. Hey, you might as well cast yourself. You liked, I liked Triple H uh, in that. Yeah, I'm going to go see Guardians of the Galaxy 3 probably Friday. I wish I could see it Thursday. Got work, but I probably will see it on Friday. Yeah. Or, yeah, Saturday, Sunday. Yeah, this weekend, if it happens on Thursday, yeah. One of these days I get to see that shit early because I'm going to be big enough on YouTube where they're like, yeah, you want to do screeners and give, in, you know, give your opinion on the internet? Yes. Would I just be a shill for Marvel? No. Unless they bought me something nice. <laughs> no. Unless they give me all the comic books. What Blade 3? I don't remember that happening. See, most people don't, right? Most people just forget Ryan Reynolds, Jessica Biel. <laughs> uh, Blade 2 was a masterpiece by Guillermo del Toro, and then we get fucking Blade 3. Like, Dominic Purcell was amazing. Yeah, okay. Well, that was. I agree with that. Yeah. All right, that fight was awesome. Yeah, I'm not going to be a shill, dude. No, but I do want to be, I want to play with the big boys. I want to play in the big leagues, baby. I like playing in the minor leagues, but I like to be called up. Would I be a shill? Absolutely not. No. No, no, I won't be, but I'd like to see it earlier. But yeah, Blade 2 was the best. Blade 2 was so good. Like legitimately, Blade 2 was horrifying, and it should be, man. It should be. The character design. Well, again, it's Guillermo del Toro. The man knows how to make characters. He knows how to write characters. He knows how to direct these creepy, crawly characters, man. The Reavers? Was that the name of the, the vampire species in the second one? And they have, like, it's half vampire. Somebody, like, Guillermo del Toro was just chilling out, smoking some weed or something. He's like, you know what would be great? Vampires plus predators. And that's what we got. Oh, Damn, the character designs were so good in that. But yeah, the idea of making Blade should be easy. Uh, the reactions are always positive. Best Marvel movie since the last Marvel movie. That can't be true. That's how you know someone's a shill. Hey, this Marvel movie was the best Marvel movie since the last movie. I didn't like Ant-Man. Honestly, the only one I really liked was Shang-Chi since Endgame. That I really, really liked. I was so let down by Multiverse of Madness and Sam Raimi. Broke my heart, man. Sam! Well, I'm sure it was the studio meddling. They wouldn't allow Sam Raimi to be unleashed Sam Raimi. Uh, because then, you know, they just... Marvel didn't have the balls. Kevin Feige, you didn't have the balls just to let Sam Raimi be Sam Raimi. Yeah, the Reapers were the best villains, man. You could put a vampire superhero... Yeah, yeah, you could put into a vampire superhero movie for sure. 100%. Could not agree more. Um, Johnny Storm. All right, so let's talk about Johnny Storm. Chris Evans, just bring him back. <laughs> Just have Chris Evans reprise the role as Johnny Storm. Um, no. Who would I have as Johnny Storm? Hmm. I don't know. Maybe some young and up and coming. I don't know. Like, the newer actors are like, you know, I like the Stranger Things kids, but I don't think they have any, like, star quality. Uh, Austin Butler. There's an off the wall. Have Austin Butler as, you know. Especially after we seen in Dune Part 2. You didn't like No Way Home? See, I don't even consider that. I love No Way Home, but that's a Sony movie. I mean, I, we want it to be an MCU film, but 
it's not. Like, as far as the Marvel movies and the MCU films... No, I loved No Way Home. That was great. But again, I consider that a Sony film. It's weird. I shouldn't shouldn't have to separate it. But for me, yeah, that's... You know, that was Sony's best movie in a long, long time. Uh, maybe ever. Who knows? Maybe ever. Until they make... Um, Sony gets in the video game market when they start making, like, Metal Gear. <laughs> then we're talking about some good movies. Um... Yeah, Awesome Butler, Mr., you know, the hot-headed fucking Johnny Storm. Um, but Galactus has to be the villain. We can all agree on that, right? I don't want Doctor Doom right away. Do a tease of Doctor Doom at the end. Go straight for Galactus. Have them be trapped in space. Like, legitimately, they got lost in the 60s. All the families, Morbius was a triumph of trolling. Trolling triumph. Have the Fantastic Four be stuck in the 60s in some sort of time vortex. Drop them down to the, the modern age. That's why no one's heard the Fantastic Four. Why we've not even seen any Fantastic Four mentioned in any previous movies. Have them be like a fish out of water. Has it been done before? Yes. Is it like a really great premise for a movie as a screenwriter? Absolutely. One of my favorite things about that first four, the, the first Thor film was he was a fish out of water. He was like an alien in Asgardian. That was some of the best moments. Have them be like, oh, and like Captain America, another perfect example. The man out of time. Have the Fantastic Four legitimately think it's the 1960s whenever they get zapped back to Earth. I think that's a great setup and a great premise right off the gate. That's just, that's what I think. Uh, but yeah, Galactus. Then we bring in Doctor Doom. WandaVision was a masterpiece until it wasn't. When did it stop being a masterpiece, Creed? That's my question. I thought it was a masterpiece all the way through. All the way through. I'm one of the weird few that loved that first episode. Everyone, I could t everyone I've talked to says, WandaVision was great. I loved it. Except for that first episode. I'm like, boy, you must have not watched any black and white TV shows growing up. Some of that shit was so good. It was a perfect homage to classic television. I love movies. I love classic television. I love Americana. I love pop culture. So, of course, I love that first episode. The whole show was a masterpiece. Cree, tell me when you hated it. What, what moment did it not become a masterpiece? I'm very, very, very intrigued. Um, yeah, no Silver Surfer either. Just, just Galactus. Fight Galactus. Well, no, you have to have the Silver Surfer and Galactus together. Shit. But yeah, it's too, too soon for Doom. And the Mole Man's dumb. You can't fight Kang. Maybe, they, maybe they're fighting Kang. I think what the rumor was they were going to fight Rama Tut. That version of Kang. Jonathan Majors, though, may be out as Kang. That might be another reason that they're trying to wait and see uh, before they really let us know a casting announcement. Episode 9 fell off the cliff, but honestly, I enjoyed other takes. Yeah, so, okay, so... Episode 9 fell off the cliff like Black Widow at the... <laughs> oh, too soon, man. Natasha! Gone but not forgotten. Except for the Black Widow movie. I think we'd all want to forget that. I, I can't believe that movie even was released. It was so bad. It was just so bad. Come on now. I do like David Harbour's Red Guardian. And that's it. And that's all I liked. Bring David Harbour in for another role. David Harbour as Ben Grimm. David Harbour as the thing. Unfortunately, he didn't get to... Like, he was good as Hellboy, too. We're talking about we're bringing it all back. Guillermo del Toro had those first two Hellboy movies. I liked the Hellboy remake. And, apparently, we're getting another Hellboy on top of that. A remake of a remake of a remake, which is crazy. That's, that's, that's crazy. What a disaster. I love Jonathan Majors. Why do likable people end up being so horrible? Well, the jury, literally, and the judge is still out on that. But uh, Jonathan Majors, you know, is a fantastic actor. Only time will tell if he gets dropped from Marvel, if he gets dropped from these other projects. Hopefully not. I mean, I like the guy. I don't know. We'll see. We shall see. Would it be easy to recast him? Unfortunately, yes. When you set up the multiverse and all these variants, you know. I think what they're going to do... Here's what Marvel is doing. I'm going to tell you right now. Marvel is waiting on The Flash to come out to see if there's any backlash from Ezra Miller. And then they're going to see what the backlash is if there's any backlash from jonathan majors and loki season two and if there's none on either side jonathan majors will continue to be king the conqueror legitimately that's their plan i'm pretty sure 99.9 percent .9 sure um yeah 
Uh, were you guys uh, fans of the Fantastic Four comics growing up? If WB gets Jonathan Majors, cast him as Mr. Terrific. Damn fucking straight. I, James Gunn leading a Mr. Terrific movie with Jonathan Majors? That's inspired. That's, that is, that's, I, I can't think of a better, I can't think of a better. The Flash can't be that good. I'm sure it's like a 7.5 out of 10. But it's like most people are expecting it to be a 4 or a 5. So if it's a 7.5 out of 10, that's still pretty good. Damn, I can't get over Mr. Tr that's brilliant. Miss, uh, Jonathan Majors is Mr. Terrific. Jonathan Majors can be several different characters in, D in DC. And James Gunn would do it just because James Gunn's like, hey, you remember Marvel when you fired me? Marvel, do you remember when you freaking canceled me and then I went over to the to DC and did the Suicide Squad and you begged me to come back? You damn right James Gunn is going to have Jonathan Majors in literally anything. I want that movie now, man. I love talking about the Fantastic Four, but a Mr. Terrific movie with Jonathan Majors would be perfect. Um, I like the, the Heroes Reborn storyline in um, the comics. What is a superhero movie that people love that, that I don't? That's a great question. Let's all play that game. Um, let's see. I don't love... I don't really love the first Avengers movie. I know. And I hate Age of Ultron. <laughs> Do you ever watch action comics? I've read a bunch of action comics. Are you talking about action comics as far as motion comics? We're talking about Superman action comics? Yeah, I didn't love the first Avengers movie. Let me be honest with you. I don't know. Age of Ultron was... Turd too. The only Avengers movie I really like is, you know, The Dark Knight. Ooh, that's a good one. Oof. That's a good one. Yeah, motion comics. Yeah, I do. I do love some motion comics. I like the first Avengers, but it's a little dull. Yeah. Oh, I love that Patrick da Bateman said The Dark Knight. Oh, it's so good. That's so good, man. That's so good. What a great choice. Been some time since I look at that, it's kind of filming. Yeah, no, I really like the motion comics. And I think DC has always done a great job with their animated films. Um, did you ever finally watch the, the Doom that came to Gotham? So good. So good. It's like one of my favorite animated. Those Elseworlds titles are legit. Uh, what do you guys think about Margot, Ro or no, Lady Gaga as Harley Quinn? Are you excited about the new Joker movie? I'm... Very excited. I'm not going to lie to you. I, I I don't know why. I'm so jazzed about it. Yeah, go to my film review for that. I will. I'll. Hey, you guys, check it out. Check out Random Street Theater. Does some great reviews uh, on products and movies. And if it's your if you're a celebrity and it's your birthday, you better believe he's going to give you a shout out. He sure is. Um, I'm going to keep this live stream a little quick. Uh, I just wanted to get my thoughts on the casting. Margot Robbie. All of that. Um, I'm going to be doing a live stream again tomorrow at 8 p.m. It's going to be a full live stream, full hour, 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. I have a special guest, uh, Aaron from Cold Bang Games. Uh, we're going to talk video games. We're going to talk video games all day tomorrow, like uh, Twitch streaming. We're going to talk about YouTube gaming. It'll be, you know, video games. So if you like video games, join me tomorrow with Aaron from 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. You guys have a beautiful night. Don't forget, you are the heartbeat of this geek nation. I always have my finger on that geek pulse. I'm Noah Drake Bell. Make sure you check out every other person's channels that are that are in the, sh the chat right now if they do create content. And, you know, you guys are here for me. I'm always here for you. I want to support your content, support your channels. Uh, Onyx, I know you've not been on Twitch in a, in a while, but once you jump back on, I'll get back on there with you. Random Street Theater. Awesome view, awesome videos as always. I'll catch you guys in the next video, and uh, yeah, literally, I'll see you tomorrow. Join me tomorrow, Aaron. Cold Bang Games. We're gonna do video game movie talk and just video games in general. Everyone have a great night. I'll see you later.